Welcome back to Keep Your Daydream. This is the long-awaited RV tour. You've asked, today's the day. Yeah, so why did we wait so long to do an RV tour? We wanted to get some experience with this rig that we called Ginger so that we could share some organizational tips. Yes, organization, how to live in it, what to do with all the space. And what we think of it too. So we thought we would provide a little bit of a review of the rig at the end of the video. So mm -hmm. what is it? It is a 2019 Grand Design Momentum 399TH, which stands for toy hauler. But we don't use it for that. We use it as a boy hauler or a <laughs> teen <do>. hauler. <laughs> And so let me just give you some stats right out of the gate. The uh, rig is 43.4 feet long. It comes in at 20,000 pounds GVWR. It has a pin weight or a hitch weight of 3,400 pounds. The freshwater tank is 157 gallons. The That's gray big. tank is 104. The black tank is 104. The water heater tank is 12 gallons. And now let's talk about the axle rating. It has three axles, each rated for 7,000 pounds. So seven times three is 21,000. And as I said, the GVWR is 20,000. That's because it's a toy hauler. It's designed to put toys in the back without exceeding your axle weight rating. The advantage that we have found with that is that we're able to go full water without damaging any of the axles. So that's kind of a perk. You know what I'm impressed with? What's that? All those numbers you well, memorized. <laughs> the reason is we've been traveling with this rig for a while and so we've gotten familiar with it. That but was amazing. As much as I know about some of the numbers of this rig, Trish knows with how to keep it organized and live in it. And so I know you're gonna love some of her tips and ideas. Thank you. Where can everyone get the a list of everything, that, like on a website? Oh yeah, we're gonna make a blog with all the clever ideas and mm -hmm. links for you, but what are you going to name it? I think keepyourdaydream.com forward slash ginger, you'll be able to find all that stuff. Okay, perfect. A yeah. uh, couple other disclaimers. You might be wondering what happened to my eye. So when we made it home, I hit my head way up here, not related to my eye, and somehow a black eye emerged from my forehead. I have no idea, but I'm fine. Poor it's no guy. big deal. But that's the explanation just with that. Just so you know what's going on yes. right there. Okay, so uh, I think we just need to jump into it. Where are we gonna start? Okay, let's go. Let's go to the kitchen. Go to the kitchen. Before I start opening up cabinets and doing the deep dive, let me give you a lay of the land so you know how this rig is set up. First, we have the kitchen, super big and spacious. Watch out for your dog. <laughs> We have a coffee station right below the loft. And this is where Caleb used to be before Carson left for school. Now he has the whole back end for himself. But we have our printer up there, it's fantastic. And then we have what's called a super sofa. This is this gigantic every seat reclines and you get this gorgeous view when you're standing in the kitchen. And then up here we have the master bath and bed area, which we'll get into and this beautiful big pivoting TV and one of the things that caught my eye immediately, which was the pantry. Let's start off with the kitchen island. This is the most amazing thing, not only because of traffic control, because people can move in many directions and get out of each other's way, but because it gives you additional space to put things out. Now, I love, and I've had this since season one, our very first rig, this awesome little drying station. It has uh, expandable arms, so that way you can put it on any opening, sink opening, but I wash my dishes and I put it right here. And then another thing, that I love is this little grate. And you can pick these up just about anywhere. You can get them on Amazon, you can get them at Target. And that just helps so that your nice stainless steel sink stays nice and not scratched up. So, um, but one of the things that I love about this is it sits on top of the counter so I can still put this cover on if we have people over or if I wanna set some things out. Um, I still have my station and I can cover up kind of the mess. Okay, let me start opening up some drawers for you because I think that's the most exciting thing is when people show you how they use their space. And in RVs, space is limited. So let me show you some cheap, easy ways to keep your stuff organized. Okay, first is dividers. Let me show you. These little plastic dividers are from Amazon and they're fantastic. I wanted to get ones that were a little fancier, maybe wood, but they were very heavy. So I went with 
these plastic ones. I put them in, they stayed in place, they are great. The only other tip is to put something down in the drawer so you're not scratching the drawer all up. But this way I have the things that I use the absolute most in the first and then I know where to go and find things. It makes for easy cooking. So one fun, easy, cheap thing to do for your silverware, if you don't have enough room to dedicate an entire drawer to it, is a caddy. This is what we've used for the past four years. But because now we have more space, I took the silverware out, they got their very own drawer, and this has now become a pen caddy. So multi-purpose. But if you do not have the space to dedicate silverware into one whole drawer, look into getting one of these caddies. I think they're awesome because you put it all in here and you can bring it right outside to the picnic table. And if you're not full time, you can bring it right into the house and then throw all that silverware into the dishwasher, which is like added bonus. You might find that your RV will not store your plates like a normal house would, where you put them in the cabinet and then you can open and there they are stacked up because the cabinet is not deep enough. This is where a drawer comes in handy. You will love it. You can just stack your plates inside the drawer. When it comes to your knives, there's a couple ways to store them. You can use one of those super cool little magnet things. I use that in a different way in the rig, which I'll show you later. Or you can use this super cool tool where you stack your knives in and the blade is covered so nobody is getting cut. Okay, so let me talk about some of the things that go under the sink. First of all, your bowls. If you cook at all, you're gonna wanna be able to mix things, serve things. If you have kids, you can throw popcorn in here. But when you're picking things out, make sure that they nest or stack. So that way you're not losing space. If I had to line all these bowls up, that would take so much space. But instead, I get to stack them in here and they nest perfectly. And then that is what takes up the space. But look at how many things I have. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's six gigantic bowls and you'd be amazed, but they get used all the time. When it comes to nesting, think about it for your pans as well. I have three pans here that I use almost every single day. Now, if you're going to do this with pans, you'll definitely want to think about getting some of these dividers. It keeps it nice and soft so that you don't scratch the inside of your pan. You don't want to buy a nice pan and then have it scratched up the first time you go down the road. It's not fun. One of the other things that's totally awesome are magazine holders. You can find these everywhere, but when you get them, look for ones that are metal because things get wet and you don't want them to start falling apart. So, and then have the proper things in the proper areas. Here, this is where I need trash bags. This is where I need um, a stainless steel cleaner. This is where I need um, scrub brushes. So that's where I'm gonna keep these things. I'm not gonna keep this up super high so I can never get to it when I need it. Speaking of super high, this is where these stackable stools come in so handy. I keep them right there so that I can put them down and actually reach up here. This is where I like to keep my instant pot. Not an Insta pot, but an instant pot, I learned. <laughs> um, extra storage and extra storage. So with this rig, we're so lucky. We get to keep extra paper towels. We get to keep extra toilet paper, plastic cups. It's like a dream come true. I've never been able to have extra things in a rig, but in this rig, you can. But I can also get to high storage here and high storage over here. Okay, let's talk about this area with our cups and mugs. I found these little stackable shelves to make these very high, shallow shelves work for us. And this is where I keep coffee mugs, I keep wine glasses, some more cups, and some um, travel mugs. But these things have really saved the day because otherwise all I'd be able to do is put one row of cups. We have this area for our coffee bar, which is great. And underneath here is an absolutely amazing cabinet that you do not always find in an RV because it is deep enough for real size books. <laughs> that is phenomenal. So anyway, so we have a bunch of books that we use for school in here. And then over here, we keep all of our extra tools. Let's see if we can get poor little Charlie to move out of the way. <laughs> Charlie, come on. You gotta move out of the way. Oh, oh okay. yeah. Stretch first. There we go. Good boy. Okay, now I'm gonna go like that in front of the cabinet. Okay. <laughs> Toaster, water purifier, teapot. Teapot. 
Okay, so one of my concerns in every single rig is where am I going to put the trash? What is it? Am I gonna have a lid? What is it gonna look like? We finally found a trash can with, you know, just a clo self closing lid with a foot pedal, and we keep it at the end of the kitchen island. It's been great because we can use real size trash bags, and when you have a family, you end up making a lot of trash. One thing we always like to mention on every RV tour is this handy dandy paper towel holder. You see how easy it is to take it out? It's inexpensive on Amazon. By the way, everything we're talking about, the dividers and these things that Trish talked about, the paper towel holder, we actually created a uh, category on our Amazon page called RV Organization. So if you go to keepyourdaydream.com forward slash Amazon, it'll take you to our storefront. On that storefront, you can find RV organization and all the stuff we're mentioning will be there. So it's super easy to find. Okay, windows. Oh, check this out. Yeah. That's really cool. You know what? Those are, they're blackout shades. They're pretty easy to operate and they eliminate a tremendous amount of heat. Yes. So I don't totally. know what the R rating is on those, but when those go down, it seriously saves Brings on the temperature heat. temperature down. Okay, let me show you the pantry. Okay, this is so cool, especially if you need storage, if you have lots of food for lots of people, or you enjoy cooking, which I do, so I have all of my spices, but here's a trick, making sure that I have different things in different pouches. So I have like sauces, I have vinegars, I have oils, and then the spices that I use the most, I kind of stacked on top so that I can bring this right over to where I'm cooking. That way I have the things that I need the most often easily accessible. Okay, Trish wanted me to talk about this because I don't think she can reach anything up here. This is normally where I go. She says, hey, can you hand me some things? But we keep cleaning supplies up there. Um, Trish is talking about command hooks. We keep a little command hook right here where we keep the light. I would say, here's a bit of an RV tip. There are certain things you just do not ever want to be in a situation where you have to look for, and a headlight is one of those things. You want to make sure that you always know where a headlight is because you're not that we advise coming into an RV park at, at dark, but anytime you have to go outside and look for something, it's just nice. When you need this, you need to know where it is. So we keep pet treats here. Um, usually this is kind of like a little bit of a liquor closet and whatnot, but really we've just been doing a really good job this season keeping things decluttered because things just continue to get more and more messy up here we just keep a bunch of keep your daydream stuff we used to keep the printer up there but then when caleb moved out of the loft and moved it back into the garage then we ended up moving the printer up there but one thing i wanted to mention before i forget is i think trish did a great job finding at target for 35 dollars a runner that went that goes between the fridge and the kitchen island it just makes the space feel a lot more homey um i don't know just it's kind of a warm cozy feeling it was 35 dollars, so we've, we've already gone through two the only thing we have to do is just kind of roll it up to bring the slide in we have brought the slide over the rug didn't have any issues but i think we got a little lucky okay the fridge it is ginormous and right now i would have more in here but we've been boondocking for a few days so we've kind of plowed through our groceries but here it is it's absolutely gigantic you can fit look at this you can fit wine bottles we have a little sparkling apple cider um, one of the things i love doing is putting things in organizational drawers like here's all of our cheeses and that way i can see it because it's clear and i can put it right in the back and things don't get lost they're not slipping anywhere they're all contained so when i open up these doors they're not falling out cool. let's show how big this is okay so the kitchen island is six feet long Ooh, six feet by two and a half feet two and a half feet two feet five inches now you know okay so now let's just uh, while we're doing this right <laughs> i mean here i can hold, hold on, I got oh it. you look got it okay look at, look at so that so from the window to right here is 120 130 inches so that it's 10 feet, 10 inches. And then of course the slide goes probably a good two feet that way. So that gives you a sense for what's going on here. Let's just do the ceiling real quick. The ceiling is 102. eight feet, six inches. Following me? Okay, here we go. We'll pass the bathroom for now and we'll go right into the bedroom. This is a king bed <laughs> it's an rv king it's kind of almost a queen so anyway but it has great storage up here it has storage on the sides i've never had so much storage before in the closet one of the cons though is that you have to do the bunny hop to make the bed because you cannot walk around the bed yeah and that is 
super frustrating. The yeah. 397 actually has a slide where the bed goes out and you can walk all the way around the bed. And it has an option for a washing machine dryer in the master. Oh, yes, very yeah. nice. Ours is in the garage. Yes. This mattress is from Mattress Insider. And by the way, we do have a partnership with them and you get 10% off when ordering a mattress from them by using KYD10. So keep that in mind because that's a huge that's a huge savings. We had to buy a mattress from Mattress Insider because of the top is curved. Uh, we really do have enjoyed the Mattress Insider. It is a memory foam mattress. It's not springs. We're kind of anti-spring and uh, it's we've been using it for seven months. It's still absolutely flat uh, and it's a little bit softer than we've used to. So uh, this is my opinion. I don't really know this, but I'd say on a scale of one to 10, one being soft, 10 being firm, I'd say this mattress is like like a five and a half, six. Would you say that Trish? Yeah. About five and a half, six. I would say that we would prefer like a a seven and a half, eight. So it's not far off, but it's it's a little far off. So, you know, but it is a good quality mattress and we are glad that we have a partnership with them where we can provide a savings to you. By the way, not an affiliate. We don't make any money on it. We just like to provide the savings and pass the savings on. Oh, one more thing I'll mention about, mention about the mattress is um, sometimes because of the climate control in an RV, humidity can occur underneath a memory foam mattress. And underneath this mattress is kind of like this this um, interwoven plastic material that kind of kind of bunches up like this, and it keeps the mattress, it keeps a bit, some air going in underneath the mattress. Uh, you can buy it in a roll, and you can throw it uh, into your RV right there. So I'll definitely add a link to that because I think it's essential to make sure your mattress doesn't get mildewy. Okay, so while I'm over here, I'm just gonna show you my closet real quick. So uh, we have all my clothes hang up on hangers right over here. Trish found these little felt hangers like this and they're pretty nice because when you go down the road things don't come off of them so we like that and if you have a closet that's only a third of the space which is what we started out with they oh stack you can put in. multiple things on them yeah, yeah they stack in really nice and then um you know the more you rv the more the more plaid you end up getting i've learned so and then trish found this at ikea we're going to try to find it on amazon but it's just kind of nice to have everything organized like this pants and shorts and t-shirts stuff like that Welcome to the ensuite. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Isn't this nice? There's two access points to get into the bathroom. It is actually nice. It's really cool. It's a little awkward when you're looking at the 399 because it's weird. You're like, you're like what's like going on? Like the two on? doors is weird, but it the is. practicality of it is actually pretty cool. It's really cool. So there's lots of things to cover in the bathroom. If you're part time, some of the things you might want to consider leaving in your bathroom are shampoo, conditioner, soap. You don't want to be trekking those things back and forth from your house into the rig and they don't have an expiration date. So you might as well get a second set of those and keep them here. But if you have makeup or different hair products, maybe they're a little bit more expensive expensive, you don't want two sets of them. So what I like to do is have separate little containers that I can bring into the house and you can you can bring stuff from your house and put them in and put them up here and then easily bring them back into the house. Um, and then if you're full time, you're going to definitely want to edit your makeup, the hair things that you need so that you have enough space um, to live full time in one medicine cabinet. Let me show you how we've done it. Okay, so I like having little containers. First, you've seen this before. This is a desk organizer, but I use it for all of my daily makeup things. And back here, I actually used a roll from a toilet paper and I put it back there and it holds all my brushes, all my makeup brushes so that they don't fall over. And then, you know, I've edited down so that I just have my basic, I have just my basic makeup things. And then this is what I'm talking about for people that are going to be bringing things back and forth. First of all, having a container so that these things don't fall when you open the cabinet, it's amazing. But also you can just pick this up and you can bring it right into the house, put what you need back in your medicine cabinets at home, and then you can put them back in here. Then keeping little things like hair ties, moms with kids are gonna love this, um, but a little carabiner clip for hair ties is amazing. And then get a little um, command, command, strip. command strip and hang it up. This is my all time favorite bathroom hack is using a knife magnet. And you can keep all of these little things that seem to get lost everywhere in your house right there. You've Ooh, do that again, that was satisfying. <laughs> watch out, watch out strong that thing is. So strong. So yeah, what sometimes. I purchased was this command hook area where I can put all the shampoos, but I also can put things like 
soft scrub and then I hang a little brush right here so if you're in here and it starts looking a little grody you can just throw this down scrub 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 take this off rinse it down and the shower's clean and you don't have to make it like a special project i have to clean the shower it's just something that you can do when you're in here already Let's talk about RVTP, that is toilet paper. Recently I've been seeing in rigs, they give you the toilet paper holder so that you can put it somewhere that you'd like, but I don't see where you're supposed to really put it here. So I use one of the drawers and one of the drawer dividers that we talked about earlier. But I also have a little container that again, you could bring into the house, put what you need, bring it in and the drawer is protected and you have something that you can easily carry from your rig to your house. How's the RV tour going for you, Charlie? Is it going okay? Okay, good talk. Now let's talk about the garage. And if you have a motorcycle, this could be, this is a 13 foot garage and it's a glass door. I mean, how cool it is if you're into motorcycling and you're sitting in your living room and you can look through a glass door at your motorcycle. I'm not into motorcycles, but if I was, I would love that. So 13 feet, it comes back in here. This is the little control panel right here where we can bring up these couches. And then this whole thing comes up. So we got a little ladder right here. We wouldn't travel with it up there like that, but I'm just gonna show you. And I can go all the way up to the ceiling and we can put the back deck down. Now, if it was just Trish and I, the back deck would probably get used more than it is. But because this is a toy hauler, but we use it as a boy hauler, uh, this back deck, that back deck never goes down. We don't have a motorcycle. The reason that we got a toy hauler is because we needed, uh, Carson was getting like too big for the bunks. We wanted to have some head space. He wanted to have an actual bed. We wanted to have a second bathroom. So that's why we ended up with this situation. Then it's nice to have an extra door. Trish mentioned that in the 399, we don't have access to the fridge when we're underway and we don't have access to the master bathroom, but we do have access to this door and we do have access to that bathroom and we do have access to this Dometic cooler. So we keep things when we're traveling on the road in the Dometic cooler. And then let me show you the bathroom. Okay, the half bath, it's pretty small. So I'll go in, you stay there. It's glorious. It is glorious, it is glorious. <laughs> because the boys are in here. The boys are not with us right now. It's never smelled so good. So we've got a little cabinet right here for them, a sink, a toilet, and a window that's just not big enough for the boys. One thing I'd love to have is a fan in here. There's no fan in here. So this is, this is all we get to protect ourselves from the boys. <laughs> I will say one of the reasons why we wanted to move to a toy hauler fifth wheel this season is because we had both the boys in the beginning of the season and we were desperate to have them have their own bathroom. That's been wonderful. What has not been wonderful is the fact that I have another black tank to empty that is so far away from my existing black tank. And it has caused many poopsies that I'm still trying to forget. I wish they would combine the exit of the black tanks into one, and that would eliminate a lot of potential issues. 44 <laughs> feet long. You used the word eliminate. <laughs> Did I use the word eliminate? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> but that was really funny. Okay. Are we done talking yeah, about Yeah, we're that? done talking about uh, eliminating the black tank. Okay, exit. so give me some pros and cons about that room back there. My pro is that the boys can be in a room with the door closed and they have beds that are big enough for them. I agree. It's the bed nice. was not big enough for Carson in a bunkhouse. We it tried. Was. Oh, and we're dry camping. So I've been using this, which is amazing. You put this in your sink and then you don't, you know, throw away as much water. Look at this. Mark used this for firewood. So that way all the scraps aren't getting in the back of the truck or in the garage, yeah. but it was all stacked nice. You had like two nights full yeah. of firewood. It was Very nice. Good idea. <laughs> Trish, come on up. You forgot to talk about the pockets, the shoe pockets. That thing is the most amazing little storage tool. We've put it in every single one of our rigs and it's from Overton's, but we'll put together like a blog for you with all the different really cool things that help you organize your rig. That's one of them. But there's all kinds of little ways that you can use your space effectively, get things up off the ground, because when you come into such a small space, if you don't have a spot for things, um, it gets messy really fast. Oh, here, this is two. 
this is where we store the laundry. If you haven't seen the laundry video, I give you lots of tips in the laundry video, how to do laundry on the road. But this is where we keep our little miniature laundry yep. storage. This container is super cool. It folds down if you want. Hey, it's getting too bright in here. Can you but pull look. that? Can you pull that down? Yes. And lighting. There you go. Okay, Boom. show me again. This is one of my favorite containers. It folds down into nothing. You can store it anywhere, like on the side of the couch. Or for us, we have it right in here. Which is actually a big enough space. We, When Charlie was a pup, we used to put the crate right here. But right now, here. not anymore. Hey, we didn't show underneath the bed. Show, oh, lift up the bed. Okay. I mean, all this stuff. Yeah, up underneath the bed. This is another place you could store laundry. Yep. For me, I took a trash, a little tiny trash bin, and this is where I store all my extra shoes. Mm -hmm. So things that I'm not wearing all the time, like little boots and yep. cute sneakers and stuff like that. And then if you can't go completely paperless with your files, you can get a, a file drawer. We have our vacuum stuff. We've got, what is that in the back? Those are... Um... Those are slingshots. <laughs> Don't I have I have an idea for that? Super necessary. And my air horn, and then yeah, the vacuum, and then a whole bunch of bags because when you have teenage kids and they're all going to different schools, you end up having to get on the plane quite a bit, and so yes. we do have some bags. Perfect. Okay. All, all right. There we go. There we go. Under the bed. You ready to go outside? Woo! Yeah, let's do it. Okay. All right. We're getting ready to pack up. The second day. I thought I would do the outside while I get ready to go. And I made a little list of things that I wanted to talk about outside. At first, I want to talk about the tow vehicle, storage, our battery and solar setup. I want to talk about the auto level system, our hydraulic brakes, which are ridiculous, the side deck, and our onboard fuel. Ridiculously awesome. Ridiculously awesome. And uh, the also, we, we mentioned at the beginning of the video that we'd be doing like a review of the 399. And as Trish and I were doing the tour, we decided that we have a lot to share as it relates to a review and what we learned. And we decided that would be best in a written format. So if you go to keeperdaydream.com forward slash ginger, there'll be a blog where we're going to talk about like the pros and the cons and what we learned. Would we do a toy hauler again? And, and things like we just wanted more time and we wanted more thought to go into it. So we thought writing would be best. Okay, so let's, uh, I got to get this table done and I'm going to put this uh, black stone right here. Um, I guess this leads me to talk about the storage. I've never really been 100% satisfied with this large storage cavity. And um, this is where we can keep the black stone. I put the two smaller chairs right here. I put these back here. I'll show you. Like that. And then I take these zero gravity chairs and the table and I put it in front. Um, but this has always been a mess and I've always wanted to organize it. And I think what I've, I just never got around to do it, but what I'd like to do is I'd like to create like a, a standing wood shelf partition and then just out of plywood and then take that standing structure and get it line-axed. I've seen this, I've seen videos of this done and it looks great. So it's inexpensive and easy to do. And that way, if I had a partition right here and some shelves, uh, that would work. And then also Sean Thompson, K White Insider Sean Thompson, when I was at his reflection, he, he used these bars up here to hang hooks. And that way he was hanging his hoses and hanging his electric. And I thought that was a brilliant idea. So that could be a tip for you. All right, so we tow with an F450. And if you're interested in more information about this F450, we did a video collaboration with JD from Big Truck, Big RV. I will link that below. And then we also did an F450 review where I talked about why I did an F450 versus an F350. But a lot of people said, would, it, would a, a, a big triple axle toy hauler be fine with an F350? And absolutely it would. Um, same 6.7 diesel uh, liter engine. Uh, totally appropriate gear ratio, payload, towing capacity, all the numbers on a 350 work to tow. Now, do you need a dual wheel truck to tow something this big? 100%. The pin weight is 3,400 pounds, probably closer to 3,600 pounds um, with the batteries and the onboard generator. So when you have a payload, tongue weight, hitch weight of that heavy, you need a lot of payload capacity. And most dually trucks, uh, the F350s, they're exceeding 5,000 pounds of payload capacity. Even the 450 is very close to 5,000. That's huge payload. So definitely dual wheel truck. While we're in front of the batteries, let's take a look at this. Okay, so with many toy haulers, there is an option to add a generator. And this is the Onan 5500 generator, which is fantastic for running one, two, or three 
air conditioning units. Also, it's great for recharging your battery bank. Now we're out here in the middle of Sedona and it's this beautiful site and Gary is our neighbor. And when we came in and we said, hey, would you, would you mind if we kind of take this site and be close to you? First thing he said is, you're not gonna run a generator, are you? And I said, nope, <laughs> we're good. So generators have bad wraps because if you don't have an inverter, if you don't have a battery bank, you need to run the generator at 6.30 in the morning just to like run a pot of coffee. And so what we have found is it's nice to have a battery bank, an inverter and some solar so that you can be independent and quiet and use the generator as a backup to replenish a battery bank on rainy days or run the air conditioning unit. So if you're interested in this install, I'll link below. We got six lithium, Battleborn lithium batteries. That's 600 amp hours, 3000 watt Victron inverter, 1200 uh, watts of solar on the roof. Let's go talk about the hydraulic brakes. Okay, so disc brakes, when you get into the big rigs, is you'll find is one of the main upgrades that people will do, and rightfully so. The stopping power of 10 disc brakes, including the dually plus the trailer, has been fantastic. In fact, I can stop the entire 30,000 pounds without the brake pedal just by just by squeezing the trailer brakes it comes to a nice slow stop but that's the biggest thing i've noticed is that everything is smooth now isn't that crazy it doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel like you have anything back there at all i have tremendous stopping power very smooth so when we've been traveling through the heartland we've been on highways and freeways and semi trucks and traffic it's just been it's been it, it a peace of mind knowing that we have the stopping power. Now, one of the things I'll say about this particular upgrade, and I'll link to the video because we were at e-trailer doing this entire install, so I'll link to that because it was a great video. But one of the things um, that I really like about this particular upgrade is some upgrades you get to experience only every once in a while, but with this upgrade, every time you put your foot on the brake, you go, wow, I love those brakes. So in terms of bang for the buck, this has been an awesome upgrade, especially when you've got GVWR of 20,000 pounds. Okay, deck. Okay, so these don't come out very often. I'd say that when it comes to the deck, we only put the steps up if we're gonna be somewhere for a few days and the site can accommodate it. There's little triggers back here and you just release it like this. And, and this is why, this is why the stairs don't come very often is this, the stairs are kind of a two person job. The deck is very much a one person job. And my second person is holding the camera. There we go, like that. All right, that's not bad. This is a bit heavy. As you can see, it's got scratched up in storage. And then I carry this and I put it in the garage. So this, the steps, the steps are awkward. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna deny that. But the deck is very convenient. And so in order to put the deck up, excuse me, Charlie. This is Charlie's deck. That goes in, steps like this. Excuse me, Charlie. No, no, oh, no, 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 no. There's no steps there. Day. And this one goes in first. All right, time to go inside, Charlie. Okay, go now on. that the gates are in, I'll show you. A lot of people ask if it's heavy. Step weight. This is a one person job. Just make sure that cable is in like this. And that's all there is to it. The deck is up. So, as I said before, I thought the deck was going to be a novelty. I thought it was going to be something cool at, a, at an RV show. Turns out it's where Charlie hangs out. It's where Trish and I work out. Uh, the deck goes down all the time. The stairs don't come out so much. The deck comes out all the time. So this is the fuel storage for the onboard fuel. This is uh, gasoline only. It has a pump to fill toys, motorcycles, stuff that you put in here. This is a 30 gallon tank and this is a 30 gallon tank. This 30, th this 30 gallon tank is for the onboard generator and we ran out of gasoline for the generator once and it did not occur to me in that moment that I could have turned on the pump and I could have transferred the 30 gallons up here into here and turned the generator back on. So in essence, I have 60 gallons of fuel to run the generator. Okay, this is where the auto level system is. You turn, you hit both of these on like this to turn it on and after we get set up and we click auto level. The thing that I will provide some caution is it's very important that you are level front to back as much as possible before you hit auto level because once that system starts going if it's gonna if you're gonna pitch forward and you're not chalked up or if the wheels are gonna come up off the ground on one side while you're leaning forward you could what, what could happen is the wheels can go up off of the ground you'll lose your chalk if you're leaning forward 
you can damage your forward stabilizing arms. The best thing to do is to travel with some long planks of wood so that you can get the rig as level as possible before you click that button. The other thing I will uh, provide some caution for is when you click auto level, the front will go down until it reaches like kind of a below a level point and then it'll start going back up to level. If your truck is not far away from the rig and it goes down, it can go down on your truck. So when you disconnect, move your truck out of the way of the rig before you click that button. Other than those two pieces of caution, this is the best system ever. <laughs> it's the thing I'm gonna miss the most. And it's been fantastic just to come over here, hit a button, let it do all the work, and I move on to something else. So this, I will miss. Some people have had issues with their hydraulic leveling system not working. I would suggest watching some videos and getting familiar with how to operate it manually and how to override the system before you're in a situation like we're out here in the middle of nowhere and if for some reason that system did not work, I would need I would need to know now how to override the system. So I would say if you have a system like this, it would be good to do that kind of research in advance. There are tons of videos because people have had problems. We haven't had any problems with our Lippert um, auto level system, hydraulic system, but there have been some. You wanna show us the inside of that for water? Okay, so, uh, and then also, so this is where all the water system is. It's a standard Nautilus system. I would say the only thing I really don't like about this system is we have 157 gallons of fresh water. And in order to get that fresh water in, I have to use power fill tank mode. You know, I just kind of follow the diagram right here. And it takes forever, absolutely forever. I wish with this system that there was a bypass where I could just, like our Ginger 1.0, where I just had a hose and I could just manually fill it because 157 gallons running through this system, I mean, it could take 20 minutes. Other than that, I think it's a pretty good system. Um, another piece of caution with this particular system is sometimes people use this, uh, I don't use it, but it's like a, like a hose spigot right here. And so sometimes people leave the hot water on and then they, they disconnect and they don't know their hot water valve is on and then that will cause an issue with their hot water heater not working. So make sure these valves are completely off all the time. Okay, so that's it. That's the 399 in a nutshell. We've absolutely loved this rig. There's pros and there's cons, but there are pros and cons to any rig. We fit in our first rig like a bunch of sardines and it got us around the United States with five people and a dog. This rig is spacious and palatial <laughs> and it still has um, issues, right? So. Don't hesitate, get out there, find something that you could do right now and get your family making memories. That's the most important part. So links to everything we mentioned to below, mm -hmm. more information on the setup, just go to keepyourdaydream.com forward slash ginger. And other than that, we'll catch you Sunday for another episode every Sunday, seven central. Talk to you then. Bye.